Hi, this is Harish here. Welcome to another episode of DB2 tutorial. In this tutorial, the tip that I wanted to provide is how to install DB2 pure scale cluster in a low end virtual machine or laptop. The scripts that I'm going to use are available for uh, the scripts that I'm using or the data files that I'm using are freely available to download at db2lewacademy.blogspot.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash db2lewacademy. So here, uh, what I'm going to use is one, like my personal laptop, and I'm going to set up pure scale cluster. This is a particularly very, very old laptop, a very low end hardware. So I'll have one member and one cluster gauging facility only because I can only have like two VMs. I don't want to have another VM for shared storage. Like I can use the iSCSI shared block devices uh, for the shared storage and the tiebreaker disks, but I am not going to do that because it increases like the number of virtual machines. So I'm not going to do that. And if you look at the configuration of this machine, this is like an Intel Pentium 3825 dual core CPU with hyper threading. So it, it's like logically four cores, but it's an extremely low end processor. And this is on a one single laptop. I have eight GB RAM with uh, instead of hard drive, the only good thing is I'm driving this with SSD disk. So that is why I'm at least able to do certain things. And when I created the pure scale cluster, what I observed was really the memory is the bottleneck. The CPU pulls it off because the CPU is not like consistently loaded. Like for example, during instance creation, you will find the CPU flaring up. But once the instance creation process is over, it will come down. Right. So similarly, like when you create the database or when you start your instance or when you stop your instance, that's the time when I see L, like the CPU spikes, but the CPU is able to pull its tasks. Uh, but the memory is the real bottle bottleneck. Like it's not coming down at all. And it's like completely saturating. It's always hovering at eight GB. So if you have a 16 GB RAM machine, even with a I3, I5 processor, I think you should be able to configure a pure scale cluster in a completely GUI mode itself. You don't need to go command line. But here, since it is a very low end laptop, I'm going to go with uh, uh, command line options. And particularly, I'm going to split this process. Like I'm going to create the GPFS cluster file system manually. And I'm going to create the instance using the GPFS mount point rather than through the GUI because the GUI will do both the things. So it will create GPFS cluster and it also creates RSCT peer domain with the tiebreaker disk. And that is really going to load the system like anything. So uh, particularly what I have observed is if the quorum node is getting overloaded in terms of CPU or memory or any kind of resource usage, it kind of like, you know, loses its role as the quorum node. So what will happen is the GPFS, GPFS cluster will lose its quorum. This particularly is a bottleneck like this. This makes the installation process through the GUI pretty much not possible in a low end hardware. So that is the difficulty I faced. So the virtual machines that I'm using like are the, like the VMware player is what I'm using and uh, RHEL 7.8 and DB2 11.5.5.0 community edition. For the GPFS shared storage, as I told you, no iSCSI shared block devices. So I'm going to use like the, the hard disk itself like the VMDK file basically. And one VMDK file, which is like logically like a, a, a hard disk is attached to two virtual machines or shared hard disk between the virtual machines. And that will be that will be used as the GPFS shared storage and that will be used as GPFS tiebreaker disk. Now why I am configuring GPFS tiebreaker disk is because since this is a very low end hardware, I cannot afford to lose the quorum. So, if the, and particularly this is a two member uh, cluster, right? So if one node goes down, the GPFS loses its quorum. I'm not even talking about the RSCTP domain. I'm talking about GPFS. The mount point itself will lose the quorum so that there is no mount point. If the GPFS is shutting down, you don't have the mount point. So it goes into recovery and all those things. So we, did, we, we want to avoid that. So uh, the, the, the one way is like configuring GPFS tiebreaker disk so that even if one node goes down, so there is only like one quorum node, it will still be active with the GPFS file system as long as it has access to the tiebreaker disk. That is the concept. And I'm not going with a tiebreaker disk for the RSCTP domain. 
because I, again i don't you can only use iscsi volumes or some shared storage uh, for the tiebreaker disk for rsct peer domain uh, it cannot be like a local hard disk or something like that it doesn't allow you and so this is kind of a very very limited um, configuration so you are like restricted to one member and one cluster gauging facility so this is just you want to set up a pure scale and you want to start stop how to work with the cluster commands get a hands on on the command line because you you don't it, not everybody is going to have access to a xbox or a very powerful uh, laptop or you know if they want to set up in a low end hardware how can they do this using virtual machines that is what i'm particularly uh, focusing so it is only for learning and demonstration purposes obviously it is not going to it's going to be really slow the system is going to be really slow so even if you i, I don't think so even the create database uh, will be like uh you know you cannot compare it with a normal uh, partition server or that you set up in your laptop or like a enterprise edition database so this particular pure scale cluster is very very heavy on resources so if you have 16 gb ram yes i i i think you should be able to pull it off uh, and a decent i3 or i5 processor like dual core is challenging but that's why i made this video okay Okay now the next slide this slide talks about the machines so there is one virtual host which is eagle and another virtual host which is cobra both have the db2 installed like right now i'm not going to show you how to install db2 so it is already installed opt ibm db2 11.5 in the same location and the shared directory that is going to use as the gpfs tiebreaker disk is dev sdc which is of 2 gb size and the shared hdd uh, for the gpfs sh shared storage is um dev sdb which will be uh, mounted at gpfs db2fs location and the instance both will have the instance uh, users db2isdn or the instance owner uh, in the linux box there will be a user db2isdn and uh, eagle machine will be your member and your cobra can be cluster catching facility you can whichever way you want you can you can configure there is no issues okay so that's it so that's the theory um so the first step would be to set up shared storage between the virtual machines okay i think there is a spelling mistake between the virtual machines so how do you do this is so if you look at your virtual machine so you can go to virtual machine settings you can you can add a hard disk right so this is like typically you you do okay i'm not going to go again like there are a lot of videos describing this how to add a hard disk so once you add a hard disk so i have added 20 gb i have added 2 gb so two disks i have added and once i do that so like for example this is the machine cobra right so let me go to cobra so you will have you can look at the location uh, virtual machines cobra cobra.vmx file so you just need to go there and fi find this entry so for the vmdk file or the hard disk that you added and you have to add these lines okay so this is like scci 0 colon 1 so which represents this particular hard disk you can see 0 colon 2 represents another hard disk which is like a tiebreaker disk and you have to say like redo like null value and disk locking equal to false so this is the important thing so which is which means like instead of locking that particular disk to that particular uh, cobra machine so it, it's going to like disable the locking and it's going to say sharing equal to multi writer so two vms can write to the same disk so that that is this uh, flag and you have to say present equal to true and you have to set this for both the hard disks so that is the thing and you have to set this for both the virtual machines so for cobra and also eagle so you can see that it is there okay So once you have done this step and boot the virtual machine so I have done this already so I have booted it so once you do that it should appear in your virtual machine so for example if i say l s b l k you should be able to see the sdb 20 gb and sdc 2 gb so same way um on the other machine you can say sdb 20 gb sdc 2 gb so once that is uh, ready so you have like the setup the hard disk level this is raw disk there's no partition there's no file system okay so this is just raw 
hard disk shared between two virtual machines. That stuff is done. So after that, you can go ahead, upload your installer and install DB2 on both the virtual machines. And uh, it's already there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to show you that. Yeah, DB2 LS is there in that location. And it's also installed here. And for some reason, it is taking a very long time. So I, I don't know, only because of the pure scale, after installation of the pure scale, it is taking such a long, long time. If I, I, in the same machine, like I have used, like you have seen all my earlier videos, I never uh, faced this issue. DB2LS is like fairly quick. It's, it, it just re responds in a very quick manner, but I don't know, it is taking such a long, long time to respond. So, so yeah, see, now it is uh, displayed. So both 11.5.5.0 uh, community edition is installed in the Cobra machine and also in the Eagle machine. Um, before installing, obviously you need to make sure that you do the prerequisite um, check, okay? So the command I have given and uh, the file also I have generated. So you can uh, look at that. Okay, okay, I am in the root. So, I mean, this is in the root. So I need to go in as root and I'll show you that, okay. So the first line is checking prerequisite for DB2 installation. This this is not with the pure scale feature, but still uh, if you are installing like DB2, it should be there. So requirement match, requirement match. This kernel parameter, I'm not sure. So it's a warning. So I'm just going to ignore it as, as of now. And you can see all the requirement matched. And this is important. So prerequisite installation, pure scale feature with pure scale feature. So it is validating. So requirement match, requirement match. So if you find any missing software, like you, you can use the yum utility, you can say, or DNF install file, DNF install pull, DNF install live GOMP. So it requires like KSH, NTPD, prerequisite SAM, the free space, and uh, the same warning comes here, the kernel parameter, but I'm just going to ignore that as of now. So pretty much that's it. So I have no warnings at all. So I have matched all the prerequisites. And after that, I'm just going to install it using the command line dbd install again. I'm not going to do a GUI because it's a low end hardware. So I'm going with the uh, command line installer db2 install, even though this is a deprecated one. Okay, so after that, is a very simple step. So MMLS cluster. So I'm just going, <clears throat> okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let's clear the screen off. Okay, MMLS cluster. So there is, this node does not belong to your cluster. So as of now, there is no, so this MMLS cluster means it is GPFS cluster. This is not the RSCTP domain. That is a different cluster. This is a different cluster. That is a TSAMP cluster. This is a GPFS cluster. There are two clusters that we are going to create. So like one is created manually because the GPFS is manually done. And the other cluster, which is the RSCT peer domain, or we call it as TSAMP cluster, that is going to get created as part of the installation process. And as part of the um, instance creation process, I'm sorry, it's not installation, it's instance creation process which I'm not going to show you right now. And we are just going to look at the GPFS creation and the mount point uh, alone in this uh, part, okay? Because otherwise it is going to load my system, the instance creation, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure whether the video will, it, it might stop the video recording or something. Um, so I'm not, I mean, I'm not showing that in this tutorial, okay? So let's, so there is no cluster yet, okay? So we'll have to create the cluster. So this is the command for the creation of the cluster. What we are saying is this is the cluster name and this is the cluster domain name and Eagle machine. So these are the nodes. So Eagle is one of the nodes and Cobra is one of the nodes. And what is the role of the node? So both of the nodes are going to be like acting like a quorum nodes and both of them are going to be manager nodes. So that is what we are saying here. Eagle quorum hyphen manager, Cobra quorum hyphen uh, manager. Since both of these things are quorum nodes, if one of them is heavily loaded or if one of them is down, that's where when you lose the quorum. So that is why I wanted to configure a tiebreaker disk for the purpose of GPFS cluster so that it, it will not lose its quorum, okay? So that is the understanding. So let's just go and run this from, uh, I can run it from any machine, so I'm just going to run it from the Cobra, okay? It's doing something, it's doing something, okay. So let it uh, do, it, it is going to be slow it's going to slow down your system unless you have 16 GB of RAM and a decent CPU. So after that, you'll have to look at the, like you have to propagate the license or accept the license for usage of the server. Okay, done. And then you can look at the license information. 
these are like really really simple commands so you can see here nodes with the server license designation 2 number of nodes designed defined in the cluster so and then you can look at the information so we have created the cluster so i'm just going to now show you the cluster details you can see that the cluster name is scale.eagle there is a cluster id and there is a cluster domain that's the domain name spectrum is the domain name and this is the remote shell command remote file copy command repository type is ccr that's the default and you can see that there are two nodes and both are admin like i told you right they are going to behave like a manager so admin node is both eagle and cobra and both are uh, quorum nodes okay so this is why so this is the exact reason why uh, we have to configure a tiebreaker disk so we have to say like you know tiebreaker disk we have to configure the tiebreaker disk to this actually the default algorithm is majority like if you have five nodes then i think you need three nodes to establish quorum right so that's the logic like if you have a n i don't know n plus one or something like they say whatever so if it is an odd number of nodes usually it's an odd number of um, nodes and you need to have like half of that plus one so that that's the logic like the majority uh, logic but you can change that which is by using the tiebreaker disk and so be, so obviously we need to have the disks first so how do you okay let's just get the state of the cluster so this hyphen a means like it will execute on the both nodes so now the gpfs state is down okay we need to create the disks first so for that what you will be doing is create a file you can create it in anywhere okay so the file name is nsd stanza you can just create whatever you want to say you can say so for um, gpfs uh, disk i'm using nsd stanza for tiebreaker disk i'm using tie b stanza the contents of the file is something like this okay i mean it's not something like this is exactly like this okay so I, I mean you can see the file uh in the cobra machine itself that way it will be you know so i have the file here so the it, the first line itself says that sdb so which means the 20 gb disk is what is going to get used and i'll be this is not network shared drive this is network sh shared disk so that the the sdb block storage itself is assigned a name my nsd and it will be used to store data and metadata which is like our gpfs file system and i think the failure group is minus one and pool equal to system even if you don't give this i think it takes that as the default value but i'm just giving that so once you create this file so similarly you will have the um what is that the other one uh tie tiebreaker disk so both entries i have uh, given here so you can see that the sd this is a 2 gb disk and this is db nsd so you have to create those two disks using the command like this okay i'm going to say that okay so processing disk it's a 20 gb disk so propagating to cluster okay and the next command would be tiebreaker disk so the hyphen v option is to verify but I, I don't know so I'm just going to give that so sometimes you don't you don't need to verify if it is not required so um, so I'm just trying verified so mmls nsd so that's the command I should be using so you you can see now there are two disks so this one is 20 GB and this one is 2 GB and the same mmlnsd mmls nsd so that command should work so it's it's there in both the places right in in both the nodes I have access to the to the two disks which is my nsd which will be used for gpfs tb nsd which will be used for gpfs tiebreaker so once those disks are configured okay um which is mmln nsd i have done that okay and after that i'll be using mm startup to start my um to start my um hold on okay i lost track okay to start my gpfs okay i'm sorry for the disturbance but it happens when you work from home okay now this is mm startup okay so this is to start your gpfs demons okay so i'll start i i i think i can give like hyphen a so that it starts in both the nodes okay and after that you can create the file system on the disk so this is the next command okay 
So I'm going to say MMCRFS, DevDB2FS. So that's the device location. And it's going to use that same NSD stanza file, which is like DevSDB. And I'm saying to verify. So it creates a file system. Okay. So I, I think I need to run this on the Cobra machine because that is the machine that has that particular uh, NSD stanza file. Okay. So what we are doing now is you can see it is like 20 GB, right? So on my NSD disk, I have created the file system dev db2 fs. Okay. You can you can even say mmls nfs to uh, that command to display the details about the file system. So you can see that and this is the default mount point. So if you don't give any mount point, it's going to mount it here in this location. And there are like various possible uh, attributes of that file system like that. And the, the same file system should be available from here as well. MS LSFS all, I think I can use that. Okay. You can see that there is this file system, uh, dev DB to FS. So now we have the file system, which is accessible in both the places, but I'm not sure yet it, it will be still mounted yet. It's yes, it's still not mounted. And we'll have to change the tiebreaker disk. Like we'll have to change that um, algorithm, right? Instead of the majority, uh, algorithm. I'm asking the con the I'm changing the cluster configuration to use tiebreaker, so that it is somewhat better for the reasons that I've already given. And you will have to set max files to cache to this particular value. Copy that. Okay, and you can do that. Okay, and the next thing would be to set the total ping time mode value to 75 and verify GPFS ready to value S. So these two commands I'm running using the db2 cluster cluster command. Like I, I don't know how to like you you can still use mmch config and set these variables, but I'm not like 100% sure. And this db2 cluster is a wrapper around all the basic. Uh, mm commands so you can think of it as a wrapper around these basic commands so because you'll be working on the gpfs native commands whereas this is like more like a wrapper command uh, which kind of uh, facilitates or you know like what do you call like it kind of simplifies the process you don't because uh, you don't want to learn so many things right like about the mm commands like if you want you can learn it nobody's going to stop you so uh, but it's just a wrapper command which simplifies the administration okay so that's that's what it is for and this use persistent reserve i'm not running right now because it wouldn't run um it wouldn't run because uh, if you're using storage appliances if you're using any other um like netapp storage appliances or emc storage appliances like that then you there is some way you can set this uh, still the db2 cluster command will also work but then we are using some local hard disk and it is probably not going to work okay so all the configurations are done now. So we just need to uh, shut down and start up for all these changes to to come into effect. But before that, let me just check like, you know, yeah, it's still not booted yet. So I'm just going to say MM shutdown here. And I'm going to say MM shutdown, uh, uh, you know, you, you can say hyphen A, like, because it will do it on both the nodes. Uh, or you can run it like once per node like that. Okay. So once that is done, we can start up. Okay. Okay. Shutdown finished. Shutdown finished. So I'm going to start up now. So if I start up, so if I say hyphen A, I think it should start up in both the places. So when I say mm get state, okay, spelling mistake, mm get state. See, it's arbitrating. And if I say mm get state on the other uh, node, Okay, it became active. That's good. Okay, I can even say mm state hyphen a. So it will like give me both the status, right? Okay, both are active now. So this is the advantage of the tiebreaker disk. It's it, because without that, um, without the tiebreaker disk, sometimes I find even bringing up the GPFS state to active is very challenging because it loses the quorum. Okay, so I mean, you can look at my task manager performance, you can see like I'm saturating my memory, but my CPU, see even if, even though I'm recording, I'm running two virtual machines, my CPU is fairly, fairly low. Uh, because obviously there is nothing executing, right? It, it executions, execution flare ups only will be there. Uh, 
but memory is consistent it's kind of saturating right now we don't even have like we just have gpfs running it's like in 8 gb it has taken 7 gb right so you you will see that this is significantly sh slowing down so if you have a 16 gb ram i would i would still suggest you to go with that okay so i i think now since we have uh, restarted it it should have mounted it see there you go so we have mounted the gpfs uh, file system and it should be available in both the systems like both the eagle and cobra and i should be able to go into that so gpfs slash db2fs okay is blank it's just no files any hidden files okay there is some snapshots folder but we'll not worry about that so this is this is it so once you do this so your gpfs cluster is ready your gpfs domain is ready your mount point is ready and the next thing the, the next process is to do instance creation so for that you need to configure passwordless login for both root user and the db2 sdn user so what do i mean by that is so if i go as root user so i'm not going to teach you how to do how to configure passwordless login just google it you can use public public key based authentication and there's a lot of material out there in the internet so ssh okay what i need to say is root at the rate uh, eagle like the same machine right so okay without password it is doing that okay now ssh root at cobra so without password it's able to do that now the same thing i'll go to the cobra root and i'll say ssh root at eagle okay without password it is working and uh, root at cobra okay and without password it's working okay this is configuring um, passwordless you uh, passwordless access between root users between those two machines similarly you'll have to do for the uh, db2 sdin which is your um, instance which you want pure scale instance name so from here i should be able to say ssh db2 sdin at the rate eagle which is the same machine okay i'll exit and uh, db2 sdin at the rate cobra again okay, which i am able to do so i'll exit again i'll go to cobra machine i'll say ssh db2 sdin at the rate eagle good and ssh cobra exit we are all set in terms of passwords so now we need to create the icrt like the instance creation and look at that so i am the sdsf means it is a pure scale instance cf means i want cobra to be my cluster caching facility and the network um, like usually why there are two things is like one is for your cluster caching facility and another is for the network on which the cluster caching facility is running so usually here we are using tcp ip um you, you you otherwise you'll be using some rdma or something like that if you're in an enterprise so so you'll have a different ip address or you'll have a different uh, host name for that so that is what this one is and you want eagle to be the member and the instance shared directory look at this we are not giving the instance shared device rather we are giving the instance shared directory and we are giving the gpfs dpf dp2 fs which is the mount point and we are giving the tiebreaker disk as dev sdc it doesn't matter because it's just going to ignore that it's going to create only an instance pure scale instance with a member as uh, eagle and cluster caching facility as cobra without utilizing the tiebreaker disk but it is just it just requires in the command line i'm just giving that it's not going to use that it's already getting used for the gpfs tiebreaker and you have the fenced user and you have the pra the normal user okay like the instance owner okay pure scale so i'm going to run this and um, it is really really going to hurt the system so i'm not even <laughs> sure so i need to go to that opt ibm db2 11.5 instance directory okay so i'm going to run this command and you will see that once i run this command my cpu and my um memory is going to shoot up more okay so once i start the instance creation i i'm going to like stop the video and uh, once the instance creation completes uh, i'll come back with the instance creation log file 
uh, you can note down like today is 23rd May. So I should have a DB2 ICRT log of 23rd May, uh, roughly about uh, 10 o'clock timestamp. So I should have that. Okay. Uh, and you will you will see that once I create the instance, the CPU, you can expect like, I'm not sure even the recording might get stopped. So, <laughs> so the CPU is loaded at the same time. Look at my memory. Memory is significantly higher. So it's saturating my memory. So, um, it's better to use a 16 GB RAM machine. You, you can see that the CPU is not, the CPU is able to pull it off. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know. So I, I, I'm just going to stop the recording. This is going to take a while, maybe some four or five minutes. I'm not like hundred percent sure. So once this is complete, we'll come back. I'll see you in the next video. Um, thanks to subscribing my channel and thanks for watching my videos. Um, see you in the next video, like which is the part two of the same tutorial. See you in the next video until then. Bye-bye.